क्या हुआ बे अबे रॉकेट गाय बने हुए हो ग्रेजुएशन के लिए सिर्फ चार महीने बचे और समझ नहीं आ रहा आगे क्या करूं शुरू कहां से करूं अबे इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग से मैं बताता हूं यहां है मशीन लर्निंग जावा एचआर टेली जैसे बहुत सारे करियर बिल्डिंग ट्रेनिंग्स ट्रेनिंग सेलेक्ट कर और अपना करियर शुरू कर इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग शुरुआत यहीं से हेलो एन गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई एम योर होस्ट मनप्रीत अरोड़ा वेलकम टू दिक्स सीजन ऑफ आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल बाई इंटर्न शाला ट्रेनिंग आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल इज अ सीरीज ऑफ फ्री ऑनलाइन मास्टर क्लासेस डिलीवर्ड बाई इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट दीज फोर्टी फाइव मिनट सेशन आर ऑल अबाउट टीचिंग स्टूडेंट्स इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सॉफ्टवेयर एंड टूल्स एवरी आई एस टी प्रैक्टिकल इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सपीरियंस द पावर ऑफ प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग in the sixth episode of this season we have dr sandeep saini who'd be taking a session on finite state machines and their hardware synthesis dr sandeep is working as an assistant professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering at lnmiit jaipur he received his btech degree in electronics and communication engineering from triple it hyderabad in 2008 and completed his ms from the same institution in 2010 later he received his phd from malwe national institute of technology jaipur he has taught robotics and electronics subjects in hindi and abroad for more than a decade to more than 8000 students i hope you will enjoy this webinar with him we have a very special gift for you at the end so stay tuned for that to chaliye karte hain vlsi design seekhne ki shuruaat yahi se and let's welcome sandeep Thank you, Manpreet, for the kind introduction, and welcome all of you, all the live participants. We welcome you all. So here we are going to discuss about finite state machines, their concepts, and how do we design them and implement them on circuits. So first of all, we have a question for all of you. We are going to ask you that how many of you have heard or know about this term called fsm finite state machine so you can quickly answer and that will give us an idea that what kind of audience are we having and we really need your interactive participation so hansika is saying that she is not aware about the concept we will definitely wait for a few more answers yes so kevin hari and maitri basu so good that you know about fsm and a few are saying that you are not aware so don't worry because this session is for the students for anyone who is actually a beginner with the concept so we will come to the fsm later before that let me introduce one problem statement in front of you so here i have a person a person is having a coin and he is flipping it so whenever you flip the coin you either gets a head or tail so what he is doing he is counting how many heads how many tails and then based on the numbers he is just focusing on the heads let us say he has received 45 heads and 35 tails he is not counting the tails he is focused only on the number of heads if the number of heads are odd he is going to raise a red flag and if the number of heads are even then he or she is going to raise the green flag now what we have with us that can you design a circuit to solve or replicate this kind of issue the problem looks very easy for a human you ask anyone who knows counting he will sit there 
he will just keep and count on number of heads and then he can raise either the red flag or the green flag but now we are asked that can you make a digital system which can do these things well there are circuit designing traditional approaches and for that what we do we will just count the number of heads and tails so 45 heads 35 tails or four heads five tails sometime later we can have thousands of heads and thousands of tails also what we are going to do we will store them in registers registers are memory storage elements so i am storing number of heads in one register number of heads tails in another and then i can simply write one if else statement see if the number of heads is odd green flag else red flag but here we have some limitations what is the limitation first of all we don't know what is our count that means whether the count will be in tens hundreds thousands or millions so if i don't know that i have to store thousands of values or millions of values or only hundreds of values i cannot decide the size of my truth table which will solve it and that is a limitation that means if i don't know that how many elements how many count i am going to have how can i proceed so i cannot write the code also some of you would have studied digital logic design if you are from engineering background and even in binary number discussions you would have discussed truth tables k maps there you would have been aware that whenever you have to make a digital system you need to make these truth tables and then only you can proceed right so we have a big problem here we cannot do that so what we do we take the finite state machine approach so what is this approach this approach says listen i don't need to know whether my count is 3442 or 1032 all i need to focus on is whether the number is odd or even it can be 1 million or only 10 the number is even that's it my focus is only on that so that means i can solve this problem using only two states so here i say i will take one state which is green and another state which is red now when we are at green so what we can expect if my next outcome of tossing is tail will the number of heads change no if it is odd it will remain odd right so here what we can see that if i am at odd number of heads and my next is tail the number of heads will remain odd but if the next flipping of coin gives you head then odd number of heads becomes even so now i have shifted to another state when my number of heads are even and i receive a tail it remains even but if i receives a head then even numbers become odd so here we are saying that we will solve this problem with a very simple approach called finite state machine we need only two states odd number of heads even number of heads whenever my system is in the even number of head state my output will be red flag whenever my system is in the odd number of states then it will be a green flag so this is the basic idea of finite state machines and now we have a quick poll for all of you
can you provide me any other example or any system where you have seen FSMs into the action? So you can type your comments. Any place, anywhere, where you can think finite state machines are used in solving the problems, in designing the systems. So Isa Amrin says dice rolling. Well, definitely it can be. Traffic light controller, Pankaj, very nice. This is excellent example. Uh, Avish also. And Pankaj is saying vending machine, uh, Shrikara, voting machine, Teja, traffic light. Definitely these are one of the most popular examples of finite state machines. Samir is saying seat belt warning system, excellent. And knowledge factory with traffic light controller, washing machine, uh, sports, metrics, car parking, coffee machine. All these are definitely an examples of appliances or systems built with the concept of finite state machine. Thank you for your interactive feedback, all the audiences. Now, let us understand in detail that what exactly is this FSM. Finite state machine, the names is quite clear. It is going to have a finite number of states. The states, if we go back to the previous example, we showed two circles. These are two states, okay? And from one circle to another circle, we can traverse. This traversing is called state transition. So if your system is having finite number of states and transitions, it is called a finite state machine. A system will go through different conditions. So when we are at head, number of heads are odd. This is one state. We are then doing some computations. We are thinking, okay, the next output is or, uh, head, mm, tail. Based on head or tail, I am going to make a decision and then we will go to another state. So all these different possibilities, wherever I can land based on my computations, these are called states. For example, if you are simply counting 0 to 7, how many states? 0 to 7, 8 states, finite, right? Then a finite state machine will describe the sequence also in which the system will go forward. Okay, so <clears throat> what do we say? Here we are counting 0 to 7. So after 0, it will be 1, then 2, then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But if it is a backward counting system, then it will be 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and so on. So the sequence is also defined. When we compute the next state, we need the present state value as well as input. For example, when you are counting and your current count is 5, what will be your next state? 6. Okay, so your current state is 5 your next state is 6. You don't need any input as of now. But imagine another one, the same example, the head and tail example. If your present state is odd number of heads, then you need the input, whether the next flipping is head or tail, then you can decide the output. So what are the components of finite state machine? Every finite state machine will have some basic components. First one definitely is state. They are finite in numbers. They are represented by circles. Inputs which will be given to the every state. These should also be finite. You cannot have infinite number of inputs for any state. Outputs are generated by the states and definitely they will also be finite in numbers. And then we have state transitions which are going 
from one state to another state and how do we do that that depends on the logic of the system so these are the four major components a system can have many states but at a given time the system will be present in only one state what do we mean by that let us say we are counting 0 to 7 if someone comes to you and ask you what is your current count you will say 3 5 7 only one of them right you cannot say my current count is 3 also and 5 also so at any given time your system will present in one state and that is called your current state but from your current state you can go to multiple different next states depending on the input every state will have incoming and outgoing paths incoming paths are coming from other states and based on the inputs the state will transition to the other states so what are the types of finite state machine there are two major categories moore's machine and miller machine what is moore's machine if your output is dependent only on the current state you don't need any other input that is moore's machine for example counting forward counting backward counting all these are moore's machine whereas if you need input from the user also then it is called melee machine vending machine traffic light controller pattern detector a lot of example that a lot of you gave in the chat section we read all of your comments most of them are melee machine where we need the input as well as the current state so here we have a quick quiz for all of you. So can you see the quiz on the LMS now? Okay, so we will wait for your... So Kevin Hari says yes, Knowledge Factory so all of you, those who can see the quiz, please follow the link which is given in the video description. Hi Sandeep, I think your screen is not visible. Uh, my screen is visible, but the quiz should be on LMS or it should be here itself, the question, Manpreet. On your, on your screen. But uh, in the modified presentation, the question was removed. Okay. So, in that case, I think we can skip the quiz part then. Okay. So, anyways, let me ask them. So, everyone, uh, some of you are able to uh, see the question, some of you are not. Uh, the question is, uh, a finite state machine will calculate or compute the output based upon uh, only 
the, the options are only input only current state both current state and input and none of them so these are the questions a finite state machine will compute the output based upon only input only current state both input and current state and none of them so a lot of you have answered it correct it will be both current state and input although moore's machine only need the current state but as a generic finite state machine we need both of these so let us move ahead and now talk about the representations of finite state machines there are two methods one of them is called graphical method and the tabular method graphical method is what we have seen already we are going to draw some graphs some pictures some diagrams whatever we call it these are called state diagrams we are going to draw some circles connect them and the other way is translate the same thing into tables these are called state tables so now let us talk about state diagrams here we are going to represent every state with a circle then inside the circle we will write the name of the state every transition from one circle to another that means from one uh, state to another will be represented these will be directional arrows that means we will tell we are going from this to this then on top of every transition on top of every arrow we are going to write input slash output that means if i give this input i get this output and i will traverse from this state to this state we will always start with the initial state and then we will consider all the inputs and go ahead and make the transitions so let us see that how to make these diagrams here i have my initial state and i named it s0 just a name s stand for state and zero means zeroth state nothing special here just a convention here i say if my input is zero okay if my input is zero then what is going to be my next state same s zero and what is going to be my output p then we say at s zero if input is one then my next state is s1 and output is p so now we can see there are two states s0 s1 there are only two inputs 0 and 1 corresponding to 0 i have made the state transition corresponding to 1 i have made the state transition now we will come to s1 if input is 0 i go to s2 if input is 0, I go to S2, output is Q. From S1, the other input will be 1. If input is 1, then I will traverse to S0. Okay, so this is the next state. Now, both the inputs are covered for S1 also. Now, we will come to S2. If input is 0, my next state is S2. And if input is 1, my next state is S0. Output is P, output is Q in some cases. So this is how we make the state diagrams. Someone can give you a problem statement. Based on the problem statement, you are going to draw the circles and make these state transitions. Now, there is another quiz that we have for all of you. And... I think we are going to skip first one and the second question that I have for all of you, uh, those who are not able to see, you can listen. I have a finite state machine which is having five states and four inputs. A finite state machine is having five states and four inputs. How many outgoing arrows will be present? at every FSM. 
at at every state of this FSM. So, but we are asking, there is an FSM, there are five states, that means five circles, S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. And there are four inputs. That means there will be a lot of arrows which will connect these five states. We are asking how many outgoing arrows will be present at every state, at every circle. So some of you are answering two, some of you are answering five, one, Veni, Venkatu answered four. Vijay Kalsaria also answered four, which is the correct answer. The answer will be four in this case. How and why? Let us see that. Okay, we are receiving a few more answers and uh, Siddhi, Harsh, Maitri, a lot of you are answering five. So let me tell you how the answer will be four in this case. Look at this finite state machine. We said that there are two inputs, zero and one. And now look at any state. The outgoing arrows, look at S0. One outgoing arrow is this, although it is coming back to the same one, but it is still an outgoing arrow for S0. So one and one, two. At S1, one arrow is going out here, one arrow is going out here too. At S2, one outgoing arrow here, one outgoing arrow here. So the number of inputs will be equal to the number of outgoing arrows. And I hope that this is clear for all of you now. Now we are going to move to the next representation, which is state tables. It's a tabular method. The same information we can represent in the form of tables. So we are going to represent input states and outputs. It can have, we can have one table only to compute what is my next state and one table only to compute what is my output. And sometimes we can combine all of them into one table also. So now let us have a look at this. We have the same example which we discussed earlier and based on the example we have made the state table. How do we relate both of them? So now look at the table. This is first column which is called present state. I have three states S0, S1, S2. My input can be 0 or 1. Depending on the input, what is my next state? If input is 0, S0 is going back to 0, S0 only. So what is the next state? S0. If input is 1, S0 is transitioning to S1. So what is the next state? The next state is S1. When my present state is S1, for 0, I am traversing to S2 and for 1, we are going back to S0. And for S2, if input is 0, we are traversing back to S2. And for input 1, we are going to S0. So this is how we can represent the same data in terms of a tabular form also. These are called state tables. Now the question comes that how can we design or solve a problem using FSM? So here we have our first question. Here is the problem statement. Design a counter that can count upwards from 0 to 3 repeatedly. Okay, the question is very clear. For binary purpose, we will take 0, 0 to 1, 1. And no separate input may be required because we have to just count plus plus. So here is the example in terms of finite state machine, state diagram and state table. Look at the problem. We said we are counting 0, 1, 2, 3. So how many states? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. S0, S1, S2, S3. When the input is 0, we come back to the same state. When input is 0, although we don't need the input here, but we have still shown the possibility. 
that even if you have the input, if input is zero, all the states remain the same. And if input is one, we are going to the next state and three will go back to zero. The exact same information is shown in the state table also. So this is how you solve problems using FSM approach. Another example, we have a pattern detector. Okay, we have a pattern detector. What is pattern detector? I have a running bit stream, which is having zeros and ones. So there is a bit a sequence, maybe 20 bits, 40 bits, whatever, and they are zeros and ones. And we are asked that in this bit stream, find <coughs> a particular pattern of bits, maybe four bit, five bits together. So here, our aim is to recognize these patterns. Like I just want to identify 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, anything. Okay. So whenever the given pattern is recognized, my output will be 1. Otherwise, my output will be 0. So here is the example. I have this bit stream. And we can see that I have to identify 1011. So where do we identify in this bit stream? So when we start identifying, this is our first pattern. We found 1011 here. Wherever it is detected corresponding to that, at that place, my output is 1. Otherwise, my output was always 0. Then I go back and keep finding, keep searching and then I say yes, one more. I found it here and corresponding to the position, my output is 1. Then I found one more and one more. So this is I uh, found four patterns, right? Now we are asked that can you please make a finite state machine also for the same? We said fine. So first of all, we decide the states. I have to identify 1011. So first of all, I decide that my initial state is nothing is detected. Okay. See, when you are having a bit stream 001011, at this point, your aim is to identify 1011, but your input is 0. You say, no, this is not useful for me. Okay. This is S initial. At S initial, if your input is 1, that means you detected the first one. Then I go to a state called S1. But at S initial, if my input is 0, I say no, nothing is detected right now. Okay. S1, that means first one is already detected. At S1, 0, 0, 1. This is 1 and I say now I am at S1. First one is detected. If the next input is also 1, what will happen? Where will we go? What should we say? Should I go to S initial or I should go to S10? So you can answer that in the comment section i am at s1 and my next input is 1 what should be my next state so some of you are answering s11 some of you are answering s10 uh, let me repeat the question my present state is s1 my next state my next input is 1 where should we go stay at s1 S10, S11. So we are getting basically three different answers. Uh, stay at S1, go to S10 or go to a state S11. First of all, uh, yeah, thank you. When a lot of you are answering correct now, let me tell you what is the correct answer. First of all, S11 is not a relevant state for me because I am not detecting one and one consecutively. 
so that is not an answer secondly after one if i get input as one i cannot go to s11 or 10 i can go to zero if my input is zero then i will go to s10 but if my input is one one argument can be sequence is broken my sequence is not having one one but then i say yes sequence is broken but you can start the sequence again at this one and then hope that 1011 will be there so this one can still be used right so at one we come back to s1 now i hope the things are more clear at 10 we are at 10 if my next input is 0 now the sequence is broken okay now the sequence is broken and we come back to s initial but at s10 if my next input is 1 then i go to s101 at 101 if the next input is 0 what should we do at s10 if the next input is 0 then we go to s10 because i can use these two right so uh, vijay is answering correct we will go to s10 and if my input is 1 then i will go to s1011 which is my target state and here i get output also 1 so here now when we are at final state s1011 if my next input is 1 after 1011 if the next input is 1 we will go to s1 if the next input is 0 we will go to s10 okay so making a state transition from one state to another this is the trickiest part most difficult part for any designer and that is what you should do correctly now how do we design a circuit for all of these so here we are going to introduce a new software plus programming language to all of you i am using xilinx vivado design suit uh, swarup is asking can we make it using four states yes we can make it using four states also and we can use on five also that is perfectly fine both of them will work okay so when we have to make circuits we use a set of languages called hardware descriptive languages so we use hdl hardware descriptive languages here we use verilog or vhdl vhdl is more at the academic level verilog in the industry we can use different statements if else and all but here we will be using case statements okay so we will be using if else also case statement also and now uh, let me talk about the software first uh, this is a software provided by xilinx which is the largest company related to digital system design supporting softwares and most widely used across the globe in this software you can make your codes you can write them you can import them you can simulate them you can generate circuits for them you can synthesize you can implement and finally dump it on fpga so fpga boards are the hardware reconfigurable boards all of this is covered in the broad domain of vlsi design finite state machine is just a domain just a small field of vlsi so using this software you can explore the whole field of vlsi 
now let us come to the coding part here what we are doing we are writing a code is xilinx free so yes that's a good question <clears throat> xilinx is available for free for students a lot of features that you need they are available for free but the high end professional features they are available in the licensed version only so xilinx is available as a free software on the official website and it is called webpack edition it is not free for limited period it is free forever you just download it you don't need any license you can use it forever okay now uh, i am just zooming in to the code we are using a clock input variable reset pin and the output variable our output variable is 2 bit because my counting is four numbers for four numbers i need two bits 00011011 we say at positive edge of the clock if reset is 1 that means i am resetting my counting current state will be s0 so whatever is your count it will come back to s0 otherwise keep counting to the next value okay simple logic then we say if my present state is s0 input is 1 if input is 1 i will go to next state okay s0 will go to s1 otherwise s0 will remain to s0 if my present state is s1 input is 1 i will go to s2 otherwise s1 will remain at s1 if my present state is s2 if input is 1 i will go to s3 otherwise s2 will remain at s2 if my present state is s3 input is 1 i will go to s0 otherwise s3 will remain at s3 and my default state is s0 and in the outputs we have simply defined that s0 will corresponding to uh, 0 s1 will be to 1 and s2 will be for 2 and s3 will be for 3 so this is the simple code that we have and now let us go to the software and show you that what are the things that we can do with this software okay so first of all let me show you the first feature that is called simulation so we go to the simulation and we run the simulation so here is our simulation ready uh, but all the waveforms we have to still put so first of all i go to clock and i say i am running 100 nanosecond clock uh, and then i give my input as 1 and then we give reset value as 1 so what are we doing here at every 100 nanosecond the clock will change input is given as 1 that means counting should happen 0 will go to 1 1 will go to 2 2 will go to 3 but reset is given as 1 that means the counting will remain at 0 so if you look here i am zooming it for you so here our simulation started you can see clock is changing input is 1 reset is 1 so the count is not increasing count is remaining at 0 okay now let me come back and i change this reset value to 0 so i am not resetting my circuit now and i run for 500 nanosecond five more cycles and you can observe now that the counting started 0 1 2 3 0 1 okay now the counter is counting 
I can run for 500 more nanoseconds and 500 more and you can observe counting is going on 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So now what I will do, I will change the value of input to 1 from 1 to 0. So if I do that, now the counting stopped. Whatever is my last count, 3, it stopped there. It will not count further. This is a simple counter that we have designed using finite state machine approach. The coding part is done with Verilog. Again, we need time to learn that. It can be done with VHDL also. Now let me do one last thing. I make reset equal to one. Anyone who can tell me what will be the last, what will be the next count value if I make reset equal to one? My current count is three here. So you can answer in the comment section. My current count is three. And if I put the value of reset equal to one, what will be my next count? So most of you are answering correct. Muzib, Shrikan, Zero, Srinivas, all of you are answering correct. If I run this simulation now, the next count is zero. Okay, so this is how finite state machine works. This is how the system works. And we hope that you have learned the basic things about the finite state machines. So we have done the coding part and now we are open to your questions. You can type any question that you have related to this whole webinar, whole seminar, anything we will be answering you. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for the amazing webinar. I'm sure uh, we all got to learn a lot today. And before we open our, uh, you know, before we open the floor for our audience, I actually had a question for you. And okay. my question is that as somebody who is eagerly interested in learning more in this domain and as somebody who is really new to this domain, what is the right path and what are some career opportunities? Okay, very nice question, Manpreet. Uh, so as we discussed that uh, these finite state machines or any digital system design, they are the core of the hardware industry, the chip designing industry that we have. And in technical term, it is called VLSI, very large scale integration. Most of the chips that you see around you, your cell phone, your laptop, uh, a simple earphone, earbuds, they also have a chip. All of them are designed using VLSI and India is going to see a boom. Some of you would have heard the news that uh, Gujarat is getting a funding of $20 billion for setting up the fabrication facility. So if you are interested in hardware design, VLSI design, digital system design, you should focus on these VLSI design concepts. We have a dedicated training program on Intern Shala, which will take you through from the very basics, from the beginner's point of view, different approaches of designing digital systems and doing it using the Vivado software, the software which is the industry standard. So that is how you can build your concepts, you can go through those details and be industry ready. That's right. And for all the keen learners here today, Internshala Trainings is offering a special additional 10% discount on our VLSI design training. So you can click on the link in the description and use code practical stint to avail the discount. And you can also check out our other trainings as well. So Sandeep, now I would request you to take up a, a couple of questions from the chat yes. before we so, end the session. Right. Arshad has asked, uh, how is digital electronic going to help in cyber security? So uh, Arshad, uh, very good question. Nowadays, actually, 
cyber security we normally talk about the software related security but if you would have heard there were news that some particular companies were banned in usa like huawei and there are news that keep on coming that some chinese mobile companies they send your data to the chinese servers right all these are features which are already built in the chips which are called hardware trojans okay uh, you would have heard about software trojans the viruses and all the same kind of things can be designed for hardware also so if you are a good digital designer an engineer you can identify you can debug such systems and make the whole thing secure uh sujeta is asking uh, i am an undergraduate student of seven semesters what are the topic to be focused for cracking a vlsi job so uh, sujeta for vlsi uh, oriented jobs uh, there are two kinds of jobs uh, back end and front end the front end design means you are going to design the systems you will solve the problems you will make their algorithm you will write the code and back end means you will be designing the chips so you should know that okay the transistor size is the cmos size is the analog vlsi part so you can focus whether you are good in the digital vlsi part or the analog vlsi part and accordingly you prepare there will be a sequence of 2 3 courses in both vlsi design uh, digital vlsi as well as analog vlsi so accordingly you can prepare right sandeep i think take one more question since we are short yes. on time and then we'll conclude okay um sai kumar has asked that what is the minimum requirement class uh, qualification to become vlsi engineer and what are the books uh, so sai kumar btech is a good platform to start and uh, although there are some companies like amd intel and all they prefer mtech but if you have a btech with good skills you can crack the interview there is uh, absolutely no hindrance in that uh the standard books uh it will again depend on the choice as i told you if you are in digital vlsi or analog vlsi so in digital john m rabe and uh, this is one of the most uh, standard books and for analog you can follow the book from samir palnitkar and you can search all those options it will again depend on your expertise where you want to go Sure. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for the amazing session, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. If you would like to watch more such sessions, so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon. We also have a Telegram community, so you can check the link out in the des description, and you can join that to get updates as well. And don't forget to again subscribe to our channel and uh, like this video. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Thank you Mr. Thank you everyone. Ye kya hal bana rakha hai? Engineering to pad li lekin practical nahi sikhe. Karta kuch hu, hota kuch aur hai. Bhai is baar na mera fail hona pakka hai. Aisi padhai ka kya matlab jisme ho no practicals? चुपचाप जाओ इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग्स पे यहाँ है 3D प्रिंटिंग रियल एस आई वेब एंड एप डेवलपमेंट प्रैक्टिकल लर्निंग वाली ट्रेनिंग्स ट्रेनिंग सेलेक्ट करो और थ्योरी के साथ प्रैक्टिकल भी सीखो इंटर्नशाला ट्रेनिंग्स शुरुआत यहीं से